Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at how to use a color light card to run panels with FPP. And we've been using a color light card for this. But color light card isn't always the right option. So this week, we're gonna take a look at one of the alternatives. And that is the pocket scroller here from Culp Lights. This is a small pocket beagle based board that offers us six Hub 75 outputs, each capable of running six P5s or 10 or 12 P10s in a really compact little form factor. And it's got the pocket beagle at the pocket beagle board on board and a little OLED display at the bottom here to tell us what's going on. Now I did record this video about a week ago and then FPP9 dropped. So here we go with take number two. Let's see how we get on with the brand new full release of FPP version nine and our pocket scroller board which we're gonna to use to run a couple of P5 panels. Connectivity wise, we've got the six outputs along the top here for the panels. We've got the pocket beagle board itself sat on a socket onto the pocket scroller. And that's got a little SD card socket for our instance of FPP. Over on this side, we've got a USB type A socket. So we can use this to plug an ethernet dongle in to connect up to our network. We've then got a power input for five volts, which I'm gonna take from the same mean well that I'm running the power from. And we've got a little OLED to tell us what's going on. So enough talking, let's start doing and let's get it up and running. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put our SD card in that I've just written. So that goes in there. There we go. And that's all ready to go. And let's bring it around this way. There we go. And I'm going to bring in my USB Ethernet adapter, my U Green USB Ethernet adapter, which I'm just going to plug into the USB here. There we go, that's ready. So all I need to do now is to get some power and we're good to go. Now I've got my trusty Meanwell RSP320 here which I'm going to be using. Uh, that's what we tend to use this side of the pond. I know you guys favour your LRS350s. That's fine, very similar in a very similar size box. And I've got already wired onto that, I've got a panel Y cable, which will drive two P5 panels. While the Pocket Beagle is booting, let's have a quick look at the P5 panels we're using today. So the five after the P number indicates the number of millimeters between centers on each of the pixels. So on a P5, you've got five millimeters between centers, and that's both horizontally and vertically. Now these come in a standard sort of footprint, 160 millimeters high by 320 wide, giving us 64 pixels across by 32 high for a total of 2,048 pixels per board. Now these are outdoor panels, so the front is waterproof, as are the top and sides. Uh, the back is not, uh, they are designed to be mounted flush against a black back panel and then you put screw holes through and you'd have a rubber gasket running around the outside. The PCB is conformally coated so if it gets damp it doesn't really matter. Uh, the water can just drain off and there are drain holes which you can probably just about see in the bottom of the board. Data-wise, we have data coming in, and then we follow the arrow across, and then the data goes out at the end, 
and it will jump onto the next panel. So we can use what are called insulation displacement connectors or IDC connectors like this one and we're going to use these to join the panels together. There we go, so that one's ready. And then we just have the panel power input in the middle. So I've got a longer cable to start off with here. Let's plug that in there. there we go. And this one is then going to go back to my controller. And this one will go on to my next panel. There we go. So we've got panel number one and panel number two and little pocket beagle sitting outside here and we're ready to plug in our data line. Now these things are quite sensitive as you can see as I'm moving my finger around, the little bit of discharge from my finger is, uh, is just waking the panel up. So I'm gonna plug this in now into port number one, which is the one nearest me, there we go. And there we are, that's our panel hooked up. Electrically, we're all done now, so we're just down to configuration of our controller in FPP. So let's have a look and see if it's woken up. And here we go, our Pocket Beagle has booted and it's ready for us. So I'm gonna go through the initial settings first of all, so no password, thank you. Default OS password, I'm gonna call it FPP9. That's fine. And we're all good, I think, there. So that's all the basics done. We can finish and let it reboot. A few moments later. Okay, so FPPD is now ready for us. Let's start by getting it configured. So I'm gonna go into input output setup and channel outputs. Now it's automatically detected that it's a pocket scroller that it's plugged into. Uh, this is through a little EEPROM on the pocket scroller board that FPP can talk to to discover what the board is that it's plugged into and what functionality it provides. So that's already been done, that's great. What we need to do is we need to go into add a matrix. It is a hat cap cape, thank you, lovely and then we can configure it. Now it says it's enabled, that's a good start. Our panel layout, now our width is two, that's fine, but our height is only one. We don't wanna change anything there yet. I'm gonna auto layout it at this point, just to get it to auto configure at the bottom. Now, before we go into this area here, if you're buying your panels from one of the well-known vendors, you can look the details up automatically for this section of the board. So we can go into vendor panel properties, he says. Right, that's not working for us quite yet, so I'm just gonna hit save. And Now, previously when we hit save, we would have had an orange bar up here saying FPPD restart required. Now they've been working on the internal code of that and the FPPD starts are required far less often now. It should automatically update everything it needs to without us having to do that. So let's go back into vendor panel properties and that is still not doing anything. Okay, so there's a bug for, the, for you for your devs. So we'll do it manually. Our single panel size, as I said before, these are 64 by 32 1 8 scan. And we're starting top left, gamma and brightness can stay the same. Panel interleave, I know we need to be on stripe for this one. Now, if you're not sure of your, the number of pixels on your panel or the scan rate of your panel, you can have a look at the reverse fit and normally there'll be a string of text that tells you the type of pixels, the number of them horizontally and vertically and the scan rate of your panel. 
So we have on these particular panels, we can see that they're P5. The pixels are 27 by 27. That's 2.7 millimeters by 2.7. So that's the actual pixel size. We've got 64 pixels across by 32 down and 8S indicates that they are 1 8 scan. So that tells us all the information we need to get them set up in here. Our layout is done. All we need to do is to hit save. And all being well, that will have everything that we need done to get this set up. And if we hit test pattern now, we should get a test. And we do, look at that. It's all working really good and dandy. So this is panel uh, output number one, panel one, and output pan number one, panel number two. So that's showing us that they are joined together. And if we scroll down from the reverse, we should see panel number one and panel number two uh, from the back view. So there we are, our panels are up and running uh, good as gold there, it just behaved uh, quite nicely, far better than it did in testing on the beta of FPP9. Now one thing that I always like to check because some panels have differences is the default color order. Now for color light cards you would have this as BGR, for uh, FPP based uh, hats it's normally RGB. So let's just double check this. So this would be red, green, and blue. And let me save that again for good measure. If I go into status control and status, uh, sorry, status control and display testing, we can go down to solid color test pattern. And I'm just going to put it on red. So we just want red and if we enable test mode, nothing happened. Hmm, we might have a bug here, devs. Let's turn off test mode. We are on fill color. I'm gonna do a manual restart of FPPD here. Let's see if it just needs that to pick everything up and get everything running. I know in the past, it, FPP has required a couple of bounces to get things working. Uh, it says it's idle now, so let's now go back into saying there's only eight channels here on test mode. And it's lighting up three pixels. Yeah, something's not right here. Input output settings, channel outputs. We should have 12,288 channels or 4,096 pixels, which is 2,048 per panel. So that is all fine here, but that is not being reflected on the test page. So I've saved that again. Let's go back into status control, display testing. Now it has picked up 12,288 correctly, whereas before it said one to eight. So now if I go into solid color, red test, we get our red test. So that is grand. And we can then drop that off, check green, and we're getting green, all is good, and blue. And we're getting blue, so that is all good. Happy days. One other piece of new functionality in channel outputs is the brightness level here. Now we used to have to mess around with that in different areas using a brightness plugin or changing values in X lights, but we can do it here now and that's really useful. So if I just change it down to two and save and then go back into my status display testing Turn test mode back on. There we go. We're doing a chase cycle now of a cycle of RGB, and we can see the brightness is vastly lower than it was when we were testing 
a few minutes ago. Now, particularly with outdoor panels, which can be really bright, you're going to find this use functionality really useful to tone things down for our nighttime shows. Now it's all working, let's go back and see if the uh, vendor element is going to work for us. So I'm going to hit vendor panel properties. There we are, it's working now. So we can select vendor and we've got wired watts or your pixel store or generic indoor panels. I know these match the same as wired watts, so I'm going to go into those. Um, but if I, for example, said indoor P10 panel, we can see up here that it's changed it to a 32 by 16 1 8 scan, and it's set that all up for us. If I put it back to outdoor P5s, there we go, it's put it back to 64 by 32 1 16 that's not right. Uh, sorry, outdoor P5 is what I wanted. There we go. 64 by 32, 1 8 scan, and it's given us a 64 pixel interleave, which is the same as the stripe that I had selected earlier. Um, so that's good. So it's configuring all of this for you. Uh, you might have to go in and get some rough settings in there before it will behave. Let's save that. And then do a test pattern again. And there we go, the test pattern is up and running beautifully. So that, apart from a couple of minor hiccups, our first real product demo with FPP9 has just worked there. We didn't have any of the faults, or the crashes that I saw during testing. It just worked, apart from the vendor panel bit um, and the number of channels moving across to the front. I'm not quite sure what happened there. The restart of FPPD seemed to help. So there we are, there's a very quick introduction to the Culp Pocket Scroller, uh, a really useful little board that you can put inside a Tune 2 sign or something like that. And, and it can run with your show because obviously it's running FPP, so it could act as a remote uh, over Wi-Fi, perhaps if you've got a USB Wi-Fi dongle for it. Away you go. There we are, that's this week. I think we've done enough panels stuff now, so it's time to move away from panels for a few weeks. So next week, we're gonna start looking at some DMX because a lot of people are getting involved in DMX, uh, looking at the Falcon uh, forums and the Facebook groups. We see lots of people saying, how do I connect a DMX device up to say a Falcon F16? So we'll look at that next week and run through how to set, how to connect it up how to set it up in X lights and get it all working for you. Have a good week, take care, have fun. See you on the next one.